the time has come for us to consider forming a national unity government. What do you think? Welcome, Namaskar, good evening. Given the peculiar circumstances through which we are going through and we will have to go through for a period of time lying ahead, I make bold to offer a suggestion. Rather than think of uh, forming parties based on coalition, why not consider the better idea, more humane idea of forming a national unity government? I have to share with you the context in which I make the seemingly bohemian or utopian or quixotic suggestion. We are uh, used to saying desperate remedy for desperate times. I'm convinced as many of you would be that we are going through rather unprecedented, uh, 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 rather an unprecedented period of time. Uh, never in the history of independent India since 1947, we have seen a situation like this, certainly not in my lifetime. Uh, for one thing, the outcome of the 2024 election has taken everyone by surprise, everyone. Secondly, it has denied to any particular party the right to form or the legitimacy to form a government with people's mandate. The government that is now formed, the NDA government, has the numbers, but it does not have the mandate. No matter how uh, the BJP interprets uh, the people's mandate expressed through this election, as a dispassionate observer of the Indian scene, I'm convinced that the verdict of the people is certainly against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Of that, I don't have the slightest doubt. The reality that worries me most, or the prospect that worries me most, is the prospect of political instability and political inst instability persisting for a period of time. Instability is something that this country cannot afford at this point in time. Even though it, we are made to believe that our economy is in robust health and that um, we have, we stand on an unshakable foundation as far as development and national pro progress is concerned. I'm inclined to believe that our state is far more precarious than it is made out to be. And it is universally accepted that polit uh, economic progress requires political stability and social harmony and peace. Now, all of these are now becoming more and more doubtful. My main reason for anticipating political stability is the peculiar situation unanticipated by us even three months ago. The situation of turbulence within the Sangh Parivar and the rift that has come to light, come to, into the open between the Sangh authority and the BJP leadership. Uh, for the life of me, I never expected that J.P. Nadda, as the president of the BJP, would make a public statement of the effect that BJP no longer needs the support and tutelage of the RSS. Even when I heard the statement, I didn't have an adequate idea of the kind of alienation that had set in between 
these two major blocks between the parent and the child, if you like. You know, in the Western culture and Western literature, there is a theme called killing the father. If you want a good illustration of this theme, uh, 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 cultural theme or cultural pattern, you can read a tiny play written by John Millint Millington Singh, S-Y-N-G-E, not S-I-N-G-H, S-Y-N-G-E, John Millington Singh. And the title of their play is Playboy of the Western World. Playboy of the Western World by John Millington Singh. Now, the plot of that play is uh, predicated on this theme, which is uh, fundamental to Western culture, the culture of individuation. <coughs> Pardon me. The culture that sets a premium on the rights of the individual and the rights, right, in fact, the duty of the individual to attain maximum personhood. So it is assumed in the Western cultural context that the, pay, the child, when it comes of age, when he or she comes of age, has to rebel against the authority of the father. And uh, in fact, that rebellion uh, is um, couched in the format of a symbolic murder of the parent. So killing the father. So killing one's father becomes a precondition for the offspring, the son or daughter, uh, to come of age. So following that Western cultural model, after all, for what you, uh, what you and I want to say, the fact of the matter is that the Sung ideology is based more on Western, particularly European cultural nationalism, than on Indian um, re religious sensibility or Indian cultural uh, paradigms. So this Western pattern of the, ch the, the son or daughter growing into adulthood, consolidating that through this ritual of symbolically murdering one's father, meaning completely rejecting the authority of the parent so that the individual now come of age, the son or daughter, creates for himself or herself the space of freedom free choice and free actions, etc., casting off the burden of parent, parental tutelage. So the statement by Sri J.P. Nadda that the BJP no longer needs the protection and the patronage of the Sankh, or the RSS in particular, is analogous to the Western cultural paradigm or theme of killing the father. I never thought that uh, I would live to see such a pattern emerge so quickly. After all, BJP has been in power just about a decade. It's such a short span of time. So this doesn't augur well at all. For the sake of my country, I wish it hadn't happened, but it has happened. It's a reality. And there is no point in assuming that it hasn't happened. Uh, the wise thing to do is to look at or prognosticate its implications, its consequences, and see how best the deleterious or harmful consequences can be obviated or averted. So it is in this context that I'm making the suggestion. And that context is complemented by another factor, namely that uh, uh, if the disarray within the sunk camp and the BJP sunk relationship gets out of hand, precipitating the state of uh, political uh, anarchy, uh, political uncertainty and governmental um, uncertainty, there is no force that can move into that vacuum. Uh, I know there are many people who feel sentimental about uh, um, India alliance coming to power. I'm the last person in India who would like to see the India alliance come to power in the present state. But that will be another recipe for political instability. If I have to choose between instability A and instability B, I would say that's not a choice for me. I, I, I want to choose political stability. So the stability, instability by NDA uh, is not inferior or superior to me uh, as compared to the instability dished out by India uh, Alliance. 
India, the people of India deserve better. They do not want to go through this uncertainty, this trauma of having to live in this state of political stability, which will take a huge toll on their welfare for the years to come. Already, our economy has been weakened by several ill-advised steps. I don't want to detail them. You're aware of all of them. And uh, therefore, I'm absolutely convinced that political instability is something that we cannot afford at all. So neither the NDA nor the India Alliance is today in a position to provide the much required political stability and stability in governance to the people of India. And stability is non-negotiable in the present somewhat precarious state of our economy. And therefore, I propose that this is the right time because we are mature, because for us patriotism is not just an empty word, but a token of the love that we have for the country. And that love for the country far exceeds our partisan camp loyalties belonging to this camp or that camp. We have the freedom and the courage to love India above loving all parties individually and collectively. India is far greater than all the political parties put together. That's the sum and substance of our patriotism. Given that reality, people like us, ordinary people like us, would rather see a unity, national unity government come into uh, 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 into governance, come into authority. And um, the nuts and bolts of uh, operationalizing this idea can be worked out. For example, a simple, simple idea would be that uh, take the results of the 2024 elections as the base. Now we know the proportion of representation See, uh, the NDA alliance has 293 seats. The um, uh, India alliance has um, 233 or 234, uh, slight fluctuations depending on which uh, independent candidate joins which camp. So a proportion can be worked out. We know the number of ministerial births. And the prime ministerial birth can go to the NDA, given that that's a larger block. And the uh, deputy prime minister can be from the India Alliance. And the remaining portfolios, uh, as per the present structure, 72 of them, can be allocated in the following manner. Let each block prepare a list of its priorities, the portfolios that they prefer. So then the two blocks can take by turns. NDA should have the first choice. It chooses its first priority on the list it has prepared. Then it comes uh, to the, the, the uh, India Alliance to have its first preference on the list it has prepared. And so on and so forth, alternate between the two lists till the portfolios are exhausted. And if there is a tussle, if there is a common demand for one portfolio, now, the ch chance of such a thing becoming uh, a moot point uh, is limited because of this particular alternating uh, opportunities to choose from the two lists prepared by the two blocks. But assuming that there is such a uh, likelihood, then that statement can be resolved by uh, tossing a coin uh, and so on and so forth. And this national unity government should have a five-year term. Uh, to begin with, and depending on its performance, uh, it, it's, its term can be uh, its it terms can be extended by another five years. After which, after ten years, I hope uh, that stability would be restored, and we can return to the present form of forming government. Um, uh, I know when new ideas are suggested. The initial reaction would be one of skepticism, if not of outright 
protest. But we are going through very, very uh, decisive, precarious, climactic times. This is not the time to get involved in internist sign quarrels and energy sapping competitions. India is already too unhealthily polarized. Our sense of oneness as a nation has been seriously compromised in recent times. The virus of alienation has spread right through the body politi politic to an extent that really worries me. Many, many groups feel alienated, not just the religious minorities. If you have been following the findings brought out by the various uh, social network sites in, in the recent months, you will see how people in various parts of the country feel aggrieved, feel alienated, and that alienation is reflected in the election results. And this is a very disturbing sign. As Abraham Lincoln said, a nation divided within itself or divided against itself cannot stand. United we stand, divided we fall. The idea that the people of a nation can be divided into two polarized and boring camps and the power structure of the country monopolized through that uh, divide and rule policy it may be all right for a colonizer who does not bother about the long-term health and, uh, and, and future of a country or a people. But it's certainly not an option for us. Because after all, we have to live here. Our generations have to live here. We are not the British East India Company uh, to come here to set up a shop, uh, make uh, mega bucks and go back home and live happily thereafter. This is our land. This is our only land. We have to think of its long-term future and uh, nothing less than securing the stability of India, the economic and political stability of India, at least for a period of 10 years, is the bottom line requirement today. And it's in, in this view that I suggest the formation of the na national unity government. Uh, I propose that we initiate a discussion on this share this with other people, everybody in your contact, let people begin to talk about it because an unusual idea has to be broadcast widely and many people co-opted into the ambit of this discussion so that it creates an environment of compulsion to the political leaders who otherwise would think only stereotypically in terms of controlling, in terms of extending their control and of um, uh, say, handicapping uh, the enemies or adversaries, etc. So we have to generate a climate of opinion in which uh, unprecedented prospects like this are given a serious enough thought for the sake of the country. And let us project it as the prime option of a patriotic mind. This is meaningful patriotism. The patriotism of hate, the patriotism of uh, targeting this group and that is not patriotism, it is national disease. True patriotism thinks in terms of what is good for the country, both in the short term and certainly in the long term perspective. And the suggestion I'm making is in that light, and I'm sure that there are enough well-meaning people, sensible people in my country, who would not dismiss the suggestion out of court but would give it a serious enough thought and they would also take it up for discussion with all uh, who are in, in the circle of uh, their influence and friendship. So I look forward to your responses and feedback and I wish all of you a great day ahead. Thank you and good night.